Always remember that the lasers are very powerful. Even though they might be set to 10%, 8%, 5%, they're still hitting your fluophore and your specimen with a lot of energy. So when you're doing an experiment, it's best to segregate cells in different areas of your slide or your culture dish. Find some cells that you can set up your experiment with. Run all the different lasers, the different PMTs, the different settings, the gain and offset until you get good images. Once you've done that, you can now go to fresh cells which have not been exposed to illumination and therefore not photo bleached and run your experiment on those quickly and easily and get good high resolution images. As I showed you before, you can go into the Leica settings pull down bar for the beam path and select specific filter packages for the fluophore that you're working for. However, remember the flexibility of the system allows me to select an individual laser. So here I have the 405 line illuminated and I can, I can set my photomultiplier tube anywhere I want. In fact, I can do several photomultiplier tubes if I wish under one particular spectra. So now I have three photomultiplier tubes engaged that are selecting light, different colored light from underneath the emission spectra. I can also control the output color of my photomultiplier tube. For example, this one is set to blue, but I can set that one to red or any color that I like. So we'll make that one red. Let's make this one green. And let's make this one maybe a glow dark. And so now I have three different colors selected for my PMT. So not only can I select different laser lines, I can select one or more of the PMTs and I can select the output color of each PMT so that I know even within one emission spectra what colors I'm looking at in the spectrum. So let's see what this looks like on our output. We've selected red for the first PMT, blue for the second PMT, and glow dark for the three PMT. If I click on live, you'll now see the image on the right hand screen. Here are my three PMTs all looking under that one excitation curve. And here is my composite image showing me all of the light combined into one image. So I can selectively choose a different color output that I want, even regardless of the area of the spectrum that I'm in. I'm scanning in a blue to green region of the spectrum, but I'm actually returning a red color. I could also return a yellow color if I want. Here I have sort of a brownish gold color. So I can choose the colors that I wish to have as output, irrespective of the area of the spectrum that I'm examining. Now that I have an image, I can do certain annotation of this image. I can add text to it. I can add a scale bar. For example, if I click on the scale bar over here on the left, now I have a tool that allows me to put a scale bar right on my image. And it gives the actual dimensions because the system knows how big every single pixel is. So I've drawn a line and it's told me that line is 150 microns long. I can always select something and delete it if I want to. Maybe I want, you know, a scale bar that goes in a different way. Or I can actually use the scale bar to measure things. So if I want to measure across a portion of my image, I can put a line across it. And now I know exactly the dimension of the image that I'm interested in. And I can do that for several, image, several features of my image clear across the whole image that I've made. Other features that are available to you on these icons on the left hand side of the image include the zoom feature. You can zoom in or you can zoom out. That's often useful. You can return the image as a one to one aspect ratio for the monitor. Again, we talked about the quick lookup table before. 
There's also an auto contrast feature, which you can play with. I don't recommend that you use it because the system automatically sets the contrast, but you can select a particular region that you wish to uh, use as the default for the whole contrast of the image. So if you want to play with that, you can. If you click on this upper uh, icon that shows many windows, it gives other features as well. You can draw a line, you can draw a rectangle, a circle, you can draw in arrows, you can do annotation. So if you want to put text on your image, you can do that as well. So all of these features are available to you on the image that's on your monitor. Remember, however, that until you right click on your image, you have not sent it as a snapshot to your experiment folder. It will not be saved and you will lose all that information if you don't save it under the snapshot feature.